In the last episode, we built the first part of our triplanar mapping setup. And also in the last episode, I already told you that the thing we built there would not work with normal maps and that this would be something we would fix in this episode. So first of all, I should prove to you that normal maps do have a problem with the current setup. This is what we built in the last episode. And as a texture, I'm loading here a test normal map a test normal map that should result in some bumps on the surface of our object. But if you take a look at this on our object, we can see definitely some problems here. While our normal map looks correct on this side, on this side we don't have bumps, we have divots and this is not what we want. And we can find the same kind of artifacts all around the object. There are some areas that look correct and some areas that look very, very wrong. So this is something that we need to fix today. Now to get an idea how we can actually fix this, we should get an idea on how a normal map actually works. And let's think about what a normal map in the end will actually encode, what information a normal map stores. And well, this will be a vector on the surface of our object that is pointing into a specific direction to sort of simulate a bump on the surface of that object. Now, how could we turn this single vector or this vector at this pixel right here, how could we turn this into a texture? Well, the naive approach would be to just use the global coordinates, the global coordinate system of that vector and store this inside a texture. So the global coordinate system looks something like this and the y-axis of this coordinate system exactly matches the y-axis of a Houdini coordinate system along with the x-axis and the z-axis. And we could simply take the value along the x-axis and write this into the red channel, the value along the y-axis and write this in the white or the green channel and the value along the z-axis and write this into the blue channel and we would have a working texture. However, there's one really big problem with this approach because if we would take this texture and say put it on another object, not this pig head right here but maybe a rubber toy, now this normal vector would probably end up in a completely different spot. So this would result in completely different axes values right here and we would basically need a completely different normal map for a different object. This is not what we want. We want our normal maps to be reusable from object to object. So for this we use a different encoding for our normal map. We don't use world space, we use something called tension space. A tension space looks like this. Again, our normal vector is pointing into the same direction. However, our coordinate system right here has changed. The z-axis of our coordinate system is now perpendicular to the surface of our object and the x-axis of our coordinate system is pointing down the u-direction of a uv coordinate space and the y-direction is pointing down the v-direction of a uv coordinate space. And this is something a renderer can use. A renderer can look up the u-direction and the v-direction, also the normal, and calculate the right normal direction from a normal web from those. And if you encode a normal vector like this, we can actually reuse it from object to object. This is why we sometimes speak of normals living in the tangent space, not the global space. But this is also where our problem is for our triplanar mapping setup, because on a triplanar mapping setup, our UVs might look like this with this tangent space, but we want to later save them into a new texture with a tangent space like this. So we have different tangent spaces between both of our UV maps that we're working with, and we need to find some way to translate our normal vector from this tangent space into this tangent space and once we do so we get correct normals and if you're somewhat familiar with our videos if you hear the term coordinate space you probably know that this is going to involve some matrix math so let's get going here this is where we left off last time i want to make just a couple of changes to the setup i want to go into my vector transform node right here and make sure that i zero out all these values in here so revert all of this to default the only thing that i want to adjust is the uniform scale and i want to set this to a value of two then i want to load in my uv test texture so i'm going down to this area right here and i'm going to bring up again my parameters and load in from my current tip files directory and test normal.exr and you can find this in the scene file downloads. And finally we should not write this into the base color of our preview material, we should write this 
into the normal like this. Get rid of this connection right here. And let's also go to a preview material, go to the normals and displays and make this a bit weaker. Let's say a value of 0.4. And let's also make the tiling a bit more drastic. Let's go back to our vector transform and let's turn the uniform scale up to four. And I think we have a nice preview right here. So the thing that I want to change today lives in this area right here. This is the thing that I want to modify. However, there's a little bit more prep work that we need to do and we need to do a little bit more prep work on our geometry. If we take a look at our geometry at the info panel, what we can see is we have our UV attribute. We're going to need this. We also have a normal attribute. We're also going to need this. But what's missing is a tension attribute. A tension attribute is necessary for us to construct a tension space. And we should create that. So let's make some room between a normal and a end node. And to create a tension attribute, we're going to use a polyframe node. Wire this in. Bring up the parameters. And I want to set the style to either texture UV gradient or MIKKT. These both take into account a UV texture to calculate the tension. In this case, I think MIKKT is a bit more accurate. So I'm going to choose this. And this will give us a tangent U attribute that we can use. So back in our copnet, let's for now turn up the parameters and let's rewire our node tree in here a bit. For now, I want to get rid of these two blend nodes in here. We're going to add these back in later. I'm also going to get rid of this connection right here. And I'm also going to get rid of this network box right here. So we have a little bit more room to work here. And let's also move our preview geo out of the way as well. Now we have our three normal map projections that we can work with. The other thing we need is again some attributes as textures. So to get those, I'm going to go way up here and I'm just going to copy these three nodes up here. Our SOP import, our rasterize setup, and our custom rasterizer that we built in the last episode. And I'm going to copy all of them and I'm going to bring them down here. Now on our rasterizer, I want to grab our normal attribute. This stays the same, but instead of our original P attribute, I now want to grab the tangent U attribute. So let's rename orange P here to tangent U like this. And let's also change the name up here and up here like this. And now if we make some room here and take a look at what we wrote out, our normal is still working and our tangent U is also working. This is what we want. To make this all work, since we are transforming our normal attribute up here, we should also be transforming our normal attribute and our tangent U attribute down here. So I'm going to select this vector transform right here with the right relative reference on the rotation. And I'm just going to copy this and paste it down here and copy it two times to transform both the normal and the tangent U like this. So now with all of this prep work done, we can work on modifying our actual normals. Now taking a look at one normal map, let's focus right here on the XY plane. There's still one additional thing that we need to do because right now our normal map is of course in tangent space, but it's also in offset tangent space. What does that mean? Well, later we want to write out our normal map, for example, as a JPEG or a PNG. And JPEGs and PNGs aren't capable of storing negative values. This is bad for us, however, because since we're going to store a normal direction, this is a direction in 3D space, so we actually do have to expect some negative values along the X and Y axis at least. So what normal maps usually do to get around this problem is they simply shift the X and Y range from a value range of minus one to one to a value range of zero to one. And this is what's called an offset normal. However, this is not what we need for our calculations. So we have to convert it again and COPS in here offers us a node for this, which is called convert normal. Let's wire our normal in here. And by default, this is set up to convert offset to signed, which is exactly what we want. Then after we convert it on normal, we want to do our main calculations in our wrangle. Let's set up the inputs and outputs of this wrangle. As an input and output, this should get an RGB value that we are going to call map, and this will be our normal map. And we want to have two additional inputs, two RGB values, and this will be our normal and our tangent U. And our map can go in here. And also down here, we have our normal and our tangent U. Let's go from our normal into our normal, and from a tangent u into a tangent u like this. And our node tree now looks like this. And after we're done with our calculations, which we're going to write in a second, we have to convert our normals back to offset space. So let's copy this node one more time, write our normals in here and convert from signed to offset again. Now, finally, we can take a look 
at our angle. And the first thing that I want to do is for my UV tangent space, I want to bring in the normal direction and the U direction. Let's create a vector and call this tan n for tangent space normal. And this should simply be our V at n, our V at normal. But just to be sure, let's also normalize it, something like this. And for vector tan u, so the tangent space u direction, we basically want to do the same thing. So normalize our v at tangent u, like this. What I want to do now is grab the same two vectors, but now for a triplanar mapping. So this will be our vector, and let's call this trp n for triplanar normal, and vector trp u or triplanar u like this. And the triplanar normal is the same as the tangent normal. So we can simply write tan n in here, grab the same value. However, a u direction will be a bit different. And this will be the direction of one axis that we use our triplanar mapping. And in this case, for our x, y plane, the axis that we want to grab is the negative x axis. So minus one, comma zero, comma zero, like this. However, if you remember the last episode, we also reversed the direction depending on our normal to just flip it the right way around always. And we have to do the same thing in here. And we can do the same thing by simply taking the sign. So if a value is positive or negative of a triplanar normal and its Z component like this. This is basically the same thing as we did in here with those invert nodes, but now just built in VEX. Now, finally, with both these things set up, we can now move on to the scary part. We can move on to matrices. So I want to create one matrix three that encodes my tangent space. So let's call it tan. And this will be created with a make transform function. And let's not forget the equal sign in here like this. And this takes as an input a z direction and a y direction. And the z direction for my tangent space will be simply my normal vector, so tan n. And the y direction will be a cross product, so a vector perpendicular to our u direction, tan u, and again our n direction, or tan n. And this is our first transform. And our second transform, matrix 3 trp, like this for triplanar. This is almost the same. You can simply copy all of this up here. And in this case, this will use our triplanar normal and our triplanar u like this. And finally, with both of our matrices, we can transform our actual normal map. Let's first of all store this in a vector called map. And this will be our v at map, our normal map. I want to multiply this with my trp vector. And what this will do is it will transform our normal from the tangent space of a triplanar projection into world space. And then with a normal in world space, we can transform it back into the tangent space of our actual UV map. And we can do this with V at map is equal to our map times, in this case, the inverse of our tan matrix like this. And now our normal map has changed and it also looks a bit more correct because as we can see right here, all those spheres are now oriented the same way. They weren't before, there were some changes, for example, between this area and this area, and now these are the same. So this is our entire normal fix done. Now we have to do the same thing for two other projection planes. So let's actually just copy all of them like this and like this. And we have to do some tiny changes on our angles. So let's tackle the wrangle on the y-axis. We have to change our vector in here. This should go like this, one, zero, zero. And we should also use the y component of our normal, like this. And on the z-axis, on the last projection plane, this vector should be the z-axis, so zero, zero, one. And we should use the x component of our normal, like this. Now, all our normal maps should look fairly similar, of course, ignoring the stretching appearing right here and right here. And now we can blend them together. So for this, let's use some blend nodes. And again, let's blend in our first two projection planes, like this. And then blend this with our last projection plane, like this. Let's bring in our channel split from before. And let's use the y component a green channel on a first mask and a red channel or X on a second mask like this. This is all we built today. So we can select all of this again, encapsulate this in a network box. And let's bring back our preview from before and wire our normal map into the normal input, turn on smooth shaded. And now we actually have a correct normal map all around our object. And this is our entire setup for today. So you can use this network box 
to transform normal maps and a previous network box at this position to transform every other map for a PBR workflow. So a diffuse maps and roughness maps and displacement maps and so on. But this is it for today and I'll see you next time. Cheers. And if you like what we're doing, please consider becoming a patron of ours, not only for supporting Antecma, but for access to in-depth courses on topics such as Kinefax, Vellum, Vex, and machine learning, and so on and so forth. Also, let me say thank you so much to all our existing patrons. Without you, this channel would not be possible. Thank you.